Hello friends, I'm Kendra Winchester. Welcome back to my channel. I just wanted to model my awesome Hub City tea for you. They come in a wide variety of colors. Naturally, I have the colors of black and charcoal gray in my closet, but you can get more colorful ones over on their website, which I will link down below. This is not sponsored. I just love them. And I'm gonna talk about one of their books today. So yeah, I'm gonna to talk to you about three books about Appalachia today. So if you didn't know, I am from Appalachian, Ohio. So Appalachia is a region in the eastern United States that loosely follows the mountain range, the Appalachian mountain range, and it goes from like New York State all the way down to northern Georgia. And there's a lot of unique cultures within the label umbrella term Appalachia, uh, and it's a very unique and special place. I really love being Appalachian. I love Appalachia, but there's a lot of stigma that comes with being Appalachian. I mean, you just look at movies or Hollywood portrayals like Deliverance or the Hollywood Hillbillies or really even on Criminal Minds there was an episode and of course that was the episode with incest and murder and stuff and I'm like really? Really guys? Like you only see stories really that fulfill these stereotypes and I think literature is no different in that circumstance. One of the reasons it's taken an entire year for me to make another video is because I kept picking up books and it was like one of four stories. It was you're leaving Appalachia because Appalachia is such a terrible place and you must leave to a land flowing with milk and honey which is New York City and the second story is coming returning home from New York City to really under truly understand how terrible Appalachia is. Another story is you go to Appalachia or you're in Appalachia to join a commune. Fourth one and or cult. You see these four stories over and over and over from major publishing houses. And I think that's because that to people working out of New York or people who aren't from the region, that story makes sense to them because that's the, one of the only ones that's ever been told. So when I was looking for books to feature, um, I found some eventually, but a lot of them are by indie presses. Indie presses are where it's at, man. I was so impressed with the selection that a bunch of indie publishers sent me. They are doing a phenomenal job and I am so grateful to so many different publishing houses here in the um, in the southern Appalachian area or in just Appalachia Central that they are doing a great job. Okay, so uh, let's just jump into the books. So the first one I have is actually from a major publisher and that is, is from Hachette. This is uh, The Third Rainbow Girl, The Long Life of a Double Murder in Appalachia by Emma Copley Eisenberg. And this is about uh, Eisenberg's experience go moving from New York City, where she's from, to Appalachia. And she worked for a nonprofit there that worked with young women and would help them with job applications or college applications and try to get them and help them up, give them a leg up in that way, uh, give them opportunities that they might not have otherwise. And so when she moved to Pocahontas County, West Virginia, uh, she discovered that there was a double murder in the county's history. And she does this uh, investigation, like this true crime investigation of those murders. And then there was also a mysterious third girl. So that's why the title is The Third Rainbow Girl. I found that really fascinating, but the part of the book I love the most is that this book isn't just true crime, it's also a memoir. It's also a history of West Virginia, particularly Pocahontas County. She really tells you a lot of things that you might not know if you're not from the region, and she is a guide. She takes you by the hand and says, here, let's learn about Appalachia together, and one of the things I really appreciate is that by the end of the book, you can tell she's really, she really loves the region. She gets it. She sees it and talks about it in such a beautiful way. I was actually reading a review uh, of this book, which on Goodreads, which I typically never do. I hate reviews on Goodreads because usually I'm looking up my favorite books. I don't know why. I don't know why I do this to myself. But I saw one person saying how they thought they romantic this author romanticized West Virginia. I'm like, no, honey. They d she just didn't talk about it in disparaging terms. If you've only heard West Virginia talked about in disparaging terms and you really have no idea what the state is actually like. Uh, and I really appreciate how she talks about both the good and the bad things about this particular place in West Virginia. But by the end, she also hands you off to someone else in like own voices books and is like, here, check out this beautiful region. Here are even more books you could read about. And a lot of them are by own voices authors. And I've seen her write other articles about that as well. I will link, there's one that she, she posted um, 
a few weeks ago and I will put that link down below but I really appreciate how she's directing people to own voices writers how she's saying I am just a person who came in and fell in love with this region and investigated this particular double murder and I you know this was my journey this is just my journey and I want you to also understand the region like I do if you're gonna write about a community uh, that you're not from this is the way to do it I think she did a great job I can see why Hachette published this book because it is from the perspective of someone from New York going into the region but as I said I really appreciated the work that she did in this book and will be basically picking up anything um, else that she writes so that's great but anyway go check out The Third Rainbow Girl by Emma Copley Eisenberg so the next book I have is a book from Hub City so that's why I wanted to model their t-shirt for you today um, and that is Carter Sickles The Prettiest Star um, and this is a novel it's about Brian in the 1980s he leaves his small town in Appalachian, Ohio. He goes to New York. The AIDS epidemic breaks out. A lot of his friends die. His boyfriend dies. So he then also has AIDS and is going home to die, basically. Essentially is the setup of the book. Content warning for homophobia and also portrayal, like very realistic portrayal of what it's like to die of this particular illness. You also have the perspectives of Brian's mom and his sister. So the chapters alternate. And I really appreciated how Sickles really did a nuanced portrait of this town. Uh, you, most of the town is really homophobic and really prejudiced against this particular illness. And so that is something that Brian faces and it is a big part of this book. But you also have the women in his life really that love him and care for him. And then there are other members of the community that he befriends and also care for him. There's another gay man in the book that he meets. And it's almost like this foil of what Brian's life could have been like if he had stayed home and stayed in the closet. And and there's something about this book and the way that it talks about Brian having an illness in his 20s that I found very moving. There's a loss of dignity that for me is one of the most difficult parts of having an illness like this is that uh, at eventually at some point you can no longer care for yourself in, in some of the basic ways. Uh, and yeah, it was, it was really difficult to read, but I think it's a very important story, a, a story that needs to be talked about more. Now, one of the things I didn't like is actually how the media is talking about this book. So the book is great. Love the book. But when the media talks about this book, they say that it's like this uniquely Southern story and what it's like to have what it was like to have AIDS in the South in the 1980s and like all this stuff. And that's, that is really not this, that's no, no. So this book is set in Appalachian, Ohio. And as someone from Appalachian, Ohio, like yes, the author, it lives in Kentucky. It's published by a Southern press, but at the same time, you know, there is something unique about Appalachia that doesn't fit easily into the binary of North and South. Yes, you can be both Southern and Appalachian or Northern and Appalachian, uh, but for me, you know, I think it's really important to note that this is Appalachian, Ohio, that this is a particular community that's rarely portrayed in literature or elsewhere. And I really found some of these media outlets like oversimplifying the story. It's a very complex story in a unique community. At the same time, when they say this is what it's like to have AIDS in the South, it's like, no, no, this is what it's like in all of rural America at that time. You could take this story, change the sports teams mentioned, and place it in like New Hampshire or Arizona or Oregon, and it would play out in a very similar way. And so I think that people in other parts of rural America shouldn't let themselves off the hook just because they can point at something and say, oh, look how terrible they are. Actually, all of rural America was pretty terrible at the time. So I think anyone from rural America reading this book will really, I think, understand a little bit more what it was like for people like Brian, whose communities really betrayed them in a lot of ways. And having to choose between your regional identity and your sexual orientation is always an incredibly terrible place to be, because those are both things that are very much part of who you are. And he had to choose. And I think that, you know, hopefully maybe one day rural America will be a more open place, but I think this is not just a uniquely Appalachian or Southern circumstance. This is a circumstance that would have happened, did happen in places all around America. So I think this is a very thought provoking book, especially if you look at sexual orientation and culture and class in this book as well. There's a lot going on in here. 
I, I highly recommend. I really appreciated what Carter Sickles did with the book um, and I'm very excited for it to be published. And it comes out on April 14th here in a few months. So definitely go check it out. So the last book I have for you is a doozy and it was my favorite Appalachian book of last year. Um, and that is Appalachian Reckoning. And this is out from um, West Virginia University Press. Again, indie presses are just killing it with Appalachian lit. Um, this is edited by Anthony Harkins and Meredith McCarroll. Um, the full title is Appalachian Reckoning, A Region Responds to Hillbillyology. I really despise hillbillyology. And a lot of people get confused as to why. Primarily, summary, is that he took his memoir and applied it to an entire region as opposed to just saying, this is just my story. Like Tara Westover in Educated, she's like, this is literally just my story. I am telling my story and that is it. This does not reflect any sort of greater culture at large, blah, blah, blah. No, that's not what J.D. Vance did. He's like, all Appalachians actually are these stereotypes. And I think that's why it was published is because it just can firm stereotypes that people have. But uh, it's been a very upsetting book for those of us who are from Appalachia because that's not Appalachia. And so I think that this book is a great way to respond because it's an anthology. It's an anthology of Appalachians from all different walks of life, different races, ethnicities, classes, sexual orientations, genders, experiences from different uh, types of jobs as well. You have people who study Appalachian studies, you have historians, uh, you have of people who study social movements, you have photojournalists, po uh, poets, and so many different kinds of people in this book. Uh, for example, you know, most people seem to think that Appalachia is pretty white. There's uh, people of the Appalachian movement in this book. Uh, there's also uh, queer Appalachians. Uh, there's so many people, like I said. Um, also in this book is Elizabeth Catt, and Elizabeth Catt wrote What You're Getting Wrong About Appalachia, which I also highly recommend. It was in my first Appalachian Reads video. Uh, she has an essay in here about how some universities are using Hillbilly Elegy as an instructive text, and uh, that is extremely problematic. And she, you know, in her much more eloquent and articulate way, uh, <laughs> it says that that is bad. So definitely go check that out. Um, I really loved so many of these essays um, and I have so many underlines and I could just sit and read you quotes from this for probably easily an hour, but I will spare you and just say you should definitely go check it out. So just today, the Bitter Southerner podcast published an episode about how there has been this response to hillbillyology. And so I'll put that episode down below, but Meredith McCarroll uh, reads part of her essay, which is about how she lost part of her accent when she went to university and eventually went and got her PhD in Boston and the, the stereotypes that she faced doing that. Um, so I really appreciated that. Uh, another resource I'm gonna recommend is a documentary called Hillbilly, a filmmaker from Kentucky lives in LA now, but she returns home during the 2016 election to interview her family and talk about the stereotypes that her family, which has voted Democrat for decades, voted Republican for the first time in ages for Donald Trump and why that is. She also interviews, you know, Appalachian authors like Silas House, who as a you know, done a lot of great work for queer advocacy in Appalachia. You also have Bell Hooks, who has done a lot of advocacy for African Americans in Appalachia. And I just really love uh, the way that she painted this nuanced view of Appalachia, because that's not a look that we get very often. Definitely go check out those resources. If you have any questions, definitely let me know down below. And I will probably direct you to people who are way more articulate than me and all the resources that I have found incredibly helpful this year. Uh, Hillbilly Elegy, the movie is coming. So just, you know, we have to gird our loins and prepare for the onslaught of terrible think pieces by parachute journalism. Anyway, that's all for me today. Um, I have already picked out my next three books, so it won't be long. I've already read one of them in print, Miracle. Um, so I'll be back soon to talk more about more books from Appalachia. Very excited. I can't even talk. <laughs> all right. I will talk to you guys later. Bye. <laughs>